Welcome to the commentary portion of a video I just put out on, you know, are we living in a love phobic culture? And it's a summary video of uh, work that Richard Grannon put out, which I highly respected. Um, I felt like more people needed to hear it, but because of the length of the video over two hours long, I felt like a lot of people were not gonna give it the attention that it rightly deserved. And so I condensed it down. If you did not see that video, I will have the link for it at the end of this video so you could just click on through and watch it if you didn't but in this video right here that you are now watching i am going to give commentary on that um as i said before um very grateful for the content that he put out there and i think part of the reason why is because a lot of us myself included have gotten very interested in the subject of narcissism as many of you know i've written a book on narcissism and I put a lot of content out on my channel about it as well, but I think the issue um, that many of us are dealing with who take an interest in the subject is having the ability to discern between somebody who is clinically narcissistic or a clinical narcissist, I should say, versus somebody who is simply displaying narcissistic behaviors, characteristics, and if you do enough um, self-awareness, personal healing work, you realize, well, we all more or less have some of these things within ourselves. It's kind of hard not to because it's so prevalent in society. Um, and that's another reason why, by the way, I appreciated this video is because um, not only is this helping us to discern the difference between real narcissism and somebody just displaying those behaviors, but it also helps us to understand why these behaviors, these characteristics are becoming so prevalent in our society. And there's been a lot of content put out there about it, but I think the way that um, Granin went about it is is quite, um, in my opinion, a novel original approach, right? Like he's not just blaming social media or whatever, which a lot of people do, um, but he talks about uh, the reasons why. And so um, one thing I, I really appreciated in his presentation is uh, talking about the solution, because I do feel in the um, the narcissism community, for lack of better wording here on YouTube, yeah, um, there's a lot of talk about the problem and not the solution. And so um, he did touch upon it. I would like to hear him do more of this in the future with his work. He did say the solution was swimming against the current, and he did admit it's going to be hard. Um, and so, you know, I would like... Uh, to get more more resources out there. I mean, and I would like to even be able to provide it to my own audience as to, you know, what does that look like? It's going to be hard. And then what's the coping strategy for that? Because right now, you know, we are basically in a loneliness epidemic. Uh, many are going it alone. So, I mean, you can tell people, well, you know, just go it alone. Well, a lot of people are already doing that. Um, but how do you cope with that? Because a lot of people have already made that decision to shut down and you know, check out of the whole dating scene um, because they've recognized that it's full of a lot of people who are not self-aware. They're not doing the shadow work that Grannon talked about. Um, they just want to screw. They just want to have a good time. That's all it's about. And so how do you, um, how do you cope in that reality where we're human, we're designed for connection, we're designed to uh, partner with others, okay? Even the economic structure makes it very difficult not to partner, right? Uh, many of us are under pressure to live in a dual income um, household to survive in the, the economy, okay? So, uh, right, we need, we need some practical advice on how do you do this, okay? Um, he also talks about instilling values into others and admits, well, that's, you know, not going to be easy. Well, um, and I can say as a single woman who has taken this advice for years, not days, weeks, months, but years, okay, um, it, it's like absolutely you're swimming against the current because you're dealing, you're dealing with being submerged in a culture that is telling you to just lighten up, just have fun, live in the moment. And this is the kind of pushback that we get from people when we try to like bring it down to earth and be like, yeah, well, uh, what is it that you're looking for? Or, you know, I don't think this is going to work out. This is not really compatible here. Well, you're looking for something light and fluffy. I'm looking for something with depth and endurance, you know, and, and this is the kind of response that you get from these people. Oh, lighten up, just have fun, live in the moment. And again, if you've been uh, sticking to your guns for, 
years and this is all you get from the culture you're submersed in, um, how do you deal with that? Because I will tell you again from personal experience, uh, a lot of these people, they don't budge, particularly again, speaking from a woman's perspective, um, a lot of men, they're, they're very strong in holding on to, um, they're going after what they want, you know, um, and they will try to break you down. And if you don't, if you don't bend or yield your, um, your boundaries, your expectations, um, your values, your ideals, okay, then they're going to move on to the next 20 women who will. There's absolutely no incentive for this man to budge what he doesn't have to, okay? Um, so, you know, you're going to have to, you, you need to be prepared. As I was saying to a viewer when I last went live and we were chatting about this, you know, if you have higher ideals or, you know, goals in life or values out of, you know, what you want in a relationship, be prepared to be alone for quite some time because many people are living in mediocrity and they're content with mediocrity. And you trying to, as, as Grannon says, instill these values in other people, not easy because, you know, there's a lot of, a lot, a lot more people affirming their values than there are yours. You're going to be like the weirdo. You're going to have to learn to deal with a lack of support and a lot of pushback and arguing and reasoning with people who frankly have no motivation to not settle. Another thing I really appreciated about this presentation from Grannon is how he touched upon the current political correctness culture and how it is impacting the genders. Um, th this was kind of, you know, a bold, ballsy move, in my opinion, because even the content that I put out, I'm not going to lie. I'm as an empath. I can already feel it like, oh, my gosh, I'm probably going to get some unsubscribes. Some people are going to put nasty comments and right like I put out a video about a year ago on how to heal divine feminine energy and got some people who didn't like the stereotype you know of feminine energy but um you know so again as content creators or you know um people who are out there in the self-help community this is something that we're dealing with, again, the cultural pushback of being outnumbered by these voices who are affirming things that, to me, frankly, again, as a Generation Xer, um, were not normalized in, in my background, and I feel rightly so, because I'm not above correction, all right? I'm not above it, but again, it's like I once said to a group of millennials, I mean, are you, because <laughs> I'm a little frustrated in the moment, I'm like, what, do y'all not learn science anymore? Because when I was in science, we learned that, you know, you, you know, that you either have XX or XY chromosomes, all right? It's like you can't change that with plastic surgery, makeup, um, foundation wear, wigs. I mean, there's nothing you can do to change your chromosomal makeup. Yes, there are exceptions. There are people who are intersex or hermaphrodites, as, as they used to call them back in my day. And those people comprise of like less than 1% of the population. Okay, so why are we pandering to this um, scientifically? Again, amongst people who are so into science, but what happened to the science of people's chromosomal makeups? And now everybody's supposed to tiptoe around scientific facts. Um, so we have an atmosphere of censorship, self-censorship, a lot of hangups and backlash. Like I said, even if I come out as a woman, talking about divine femininity um, because there's so much I think even at a subconscious level rejection of femininity and even right now as I'm filming this we kind of see this playing out on a global scale because you have right recently in the Olympics which I don't really follow okay but I've been seeing it in my Twitter feed this um, male swimmer who is winning in women's sports because apparently now men can compete with women, which again, used to not be okay, um, but now it's politically correct. And, and we're seeing these men who were not really excelling when competing against other men, but when you put them against women, they're excelling and nobody is allowed to talk about it. They're out competing the women. They're throwing these women off of their careers, off of maybe college scholarships. Nobody is allowed to talk about this. It is engendering 
more tension between the genders. Um, why? Because we have this refusal to acknowledge biological differences, right? Again, going back to the science, um, we are different. We absolutely are. Pound for pound, a man has more muscle mass than I do, but I can birth men. All right. So it doesn't mean that somebody, I don't know why as genders, we can't work through this and say, um, I'm good at maybe what you can't do. And maybe you're good at what I can't do. Like, how can we work through this? Well, first you got to acknowledge what the differences are, but there is some cultural. And even if you try to broach that conversation, you get so much people being feigned and vexed out of where we've got to know where this is coming from. I appreciate Granon bringing that up. Um, he also talks about uh, good relationships, okay, and the ideals possessing a relationship and how ideologies exist in shadow, which I felt was pretty um, important because as I've been doing more self-healing and shadow work within myself over the last few years, I've gone back to my 20s and how this played out for me. And I can now see, you know, young couples in their 20s um, going through the same thing. And I've had to unlearn this, right, where you you so badly, right? You, you, you want to make this person be the one that you, you, right? This is part of your whole little fantasy thing. You, you project this idealization, this expectation upon the other person. Um, and, and, and it, rather than actually get to know who are you at an intimate level, which I think is something, again, we need more tools and resources out there in the self-help community to discuss uh, how do you have um, these meaningful conversations? How do you develop? How do you build and maintain more intimacy in your relationships where you get to know who this person all, uh, really is versus who you want them to be or who you need them to be, you know, that type of thing. Um, and yeah, dealing with that shadow aspect within yourself because I feel personally, again, from a woman's perspective that... Um, a lot of men are carrying a shadow with them that, that the perfect relationship is going to be easy, effortless. This woman's just going to make me feel good all the time. Uh, Granted, even said, yeah, nonstop party, which <laughs> totally related to that. Um, and, you know, for the women um, imposing upon the man, oh, he's going to be my knight in shining armor. He's going to give me the white picket fence, the happily ever after. Whatever, un you know, fill in the blank, unrealistic expectations you can come up with. Um, people are expecting uh, relationships maybe naively to be effortless. It kind of like almost children. And he talks about this passivity where you're just kind of wanting it delivered to you on a silver platter. You don't want to have to sacrifice. You don't want to have to think too much about this or put the effort in. Uh, but at what point is it like, wow, you know, it shouldn't be that hard, right? Well, I think people need to discern uh, how much effort in a relationship is justified, healthy, um, what does that look like? Okay, because I think a lot of people just flat don't know how to build and maintain healthy relationships in all practicality. They just don't. We need more resources on that. Um, love that he talked about feminism um, and how it has emasculated men. And yes, you do see, I, I will say, you know, again, as a woman in the United States observing uh, a lot of women in the feminist movement or women who identify as feminists, it's it's quite bizarre to me because it's almost like they have rejected femininity and they are taking on masculinity. Um, and so I, to me, I think that we need to have more conversations of what it means to be pro-woman, pro-woman, okay? Um, and, and for me, in my journey with that, I talked about that in my video about healing um, divine feminine energy. For me, it is the realization that that Feminism, in its purest form, is life-giving and life-preserving. We need more, more equipping of women in this respect. Um, we need to get back to embracing femininity and stop seeing uh, women as weak or at least implying that there is something weak in being classically, traditionally feminine, which is what nurturing, mothering, life-giving, life-preserving, as I was saying before. There's, I think, also an untwisting that needs to be done, um, not only of the, the perspective of, of real uh, divine femininity versus feminism, right? But also, you know, looking at how it's gotten twisted with women's values, you know? 
A lot of times women are characterized as being gold diggers, and yes, I think that's a shadow aspect, but really in, a, in, in its purest expression, women, many women, yes, there are always exceptions, but many of us, we value stability and security. And yes, that can come out in a very dark, shadowy way as a gold diggers or whatever. Um, but there needs to be an understanding, particularly among men, because what men are doing, and again, might be projection of women are putting it upon men to bring the stability and security when we've got an epidemic of, of, of insecurity among men. And what men, as far as I can tell, what they're doing is they're just going to go play their games and, you know, live in their mom's basement. A lot of them, okay, they're going to check out. They're going to let that woman go, you know, to college, get the degrees, take the higher paying jobs. They're going to let her be the provider, the protector, the man, the masculine energy. They're going to let her initiate and stand into that while they stand down and play passive. Um, this core issue of men not being in their rightful place, not standing up, not initiating out of this internal insecurity, lack of internal strength, that really needs to be addressed because frankly, and I will again say in my own experience, um, you know, my goals even in my 20s were to live a very domesticated traditional life. But the only time I, you know, pursued higher education and, you know, um, higher paying jobs and higher status was because I was trying to give myself the stability and the security that the man in my life was not. And that wasn't about being a gold digger. That's about putting a roof over your children's head and food in their mouths. It's very practical. But again, why are we not? We've got to get, we got to work through this. Okay. Because to me, I think the misalignment in men is causing misalignment with women. And it's often been said that if you get the men get in alignment, the women will get in alignment. Because again, I think if, if, you know, things were in alignment with men, women would not have a problem taking more of a supportive role. They're taking this initiative role or the role of an initiator <clears throat> because he's not. And if, if he doesn't stand up and lead, well, somebody's got to lead, follow, or get out of the way. It's kind of the, the attitude here, particularly when you have kids, somebody's going to have to do it. And we got to deal with the insecurity in men. Um, I would like to see women also, you know, return to embracing wisdom, which from what I understand, that was something that was actually coveted centuries ago more so than feminine beauty. And I'm not saying, you know, to discard beauty. I think that that's, um, again, you know, embracing beauty is embracing, embracing femininity in its purest sense. Uh, but at the same time, we, we need to put equal, if not more emphasis on um, women being seen as wise women who offer wise counsel, guidance, things like that, um, rather than the images of women that we see now where the only way you can have any relevance or get any kind of attention, acknowledgement, honor from men is based on, you know, I don't know how short you can hike up your skirt or something like that. With the men, you know, I would really like to see um, more talk about not only men um, having more inner strength, more security, but using that inner strength and inner security to empower women. Because I think that there's a lot of disempowering dynamics. Yes, comes across as narcissistic, um, but unfortunately, there's so much exploitation going on that, you know, it, the problem is if, again, going back to women coming into alignment when men are in alignment. The problem is when women come into alignment and the man is not, what you see is a lot of this being exploited. Women who, you know, take more of a soft, accommodating, nurturing um, approach, but then they get exploited by men. And so I'm gonna share with you, you know, my perspective as a single woman is that Right now, we're in the midst of an epidemic of beta males, um, men who cannot initiate and 
you know, the only kind of woman that's actually attracted to that is probably a woman who is, as Granin would say, um, living out of her anima shadow. It's like a Jezebel Ahab spirit. The ones who can initiate, unfortunately, we have to worry about, as I've advised my audience, looking out for these fake alphas, these men who got, they come across really strong on the exterior, but on the interior, the, the security, the integrity, it's not there at all even though they put up a really good front. Um, and, and, you know, honestly, it's, again, my observation as a single woman that a lot of men, sorry to stereotype, this has been my experience, a lot of men tend to view women as objects of entertainment and pleasure. And I'm not necessarily, like, please don't read into that, that I hate men, I don't hate men. It's just that I notice this over and over. It's a pattern, okay? Where is this coming from? How do we culturally break this down and deal with it? Again, culturally, I think that many people, definitely men, are in a state of suspended or extended adolescence. There's a lot of irresponsibility, a lot of avoidance of commitment. Um, because, right, they're avoiding the responsibility. They don't want it. And they're avoiding responsibility because they're insecure and unstable within themselves. So, right, they can't offer to someone what they don't have within themselves. But again, where's the self-awareness here? How do we deal with these people who can't or won't uh, work this out within themselves? So um, an issue that I have, again, as a single woman is um, you hear a lot of this complaining about women, particularly in the MGTOW movement, um, of women who settle for scraps. But the reality is that uh, a lot of men, that's all they offer. You know, I can tell you that having been divorced for going on seven years now. Okay. Um, if you are sticking to your guns and you don't settle for scraps, you are going to be alone for years, years. Because most people in the dating world, in the dating scene, that's all they offer, that's all they have to offer. A lot of those people are not doing the self-healing, self-awareness work. If you do that within yourself, if you take a time out, like say I did for years where I focused on, you know, healing myself, becoming more self-aware um, and, you, and you, you focus on, you know, edifying yourself and you go through this time of intentional celibacy, all right, um, you come out of that even further disconnected from what's going on because you realize, wow, I've just spent all this time working on slaying my inner demons and these other people have not, you know, and they're not even aware of what their inner demons are. So uh, what they're doing is instead channeling all their energy into playing games, um, watching sports, um, cars, you know, playing around with cars, playing women. It's all a big, you know, again, pleasure, pleasure me and entertain me. <laughs> um, so, I, I don't know if I, you, you can hear it in my speech, but I keep circling back to how I started this conversation is we, we got to talk about how to deal with this. Like, yeah, you're telling people the solution is swim against the current. You're telling people that, yeah, it's not going to be easy. Try to instill values in others. But the, the reality is that um, it's kind of like boundaries, right? A lot of people think, oh, setting and when you're naive about these things, you think setting boundaries. Oh, okay, so then I'll get what I want. No, <laughs> you're going to set your boundaries and then you're going to hear what you intuitively knew all along is that, damn, if I like draw this line in the sand, I'm not going to win. They're not going to cooperate with me, you know? And uh, so it's, it's kind of in the same way. It's like, all right, so you, you don't play the charades. You don't take their scraps. Then you starve. You starve. Okay. So like, we got to deal with this. All right. We got to deal with this. Uh, right, like setting boundaries is like not about you winning. It's not about you winning, okay? But so how do you cope with the losing? The losing. And I'm going to call it losing because even though I know there are benefits to doing this, right? Um, but, you know, the the drawbacks are, you know, we're not, we're not really built for this. We're not built to go it alone in this life. As Granite says, we're social creatures. So how do you deal 
with not having a partner, um, even at a, at, a, at a very physical level, not having someone that you can connect with physically, sexually, yes. Um, how do you deal with all these financially, right, in this economy? My God, um, very much a hard thing. I think harder than, I'd like to really see him talk more about that. Um, but yeah, um, going on to the shadow work that he mentioned, um, yeah, I do feel like uh, very important, very important, uh, but Again, we are dealing with so many other people who are not. So like you, you do the shadow work, but other people aren't doing it. <laughs> um, and, and, and then you just end up, you know, quitting relationships because other people are quitting relationships or they're just getting scraps. It takes me back to what Teal Swan once said, which is that we're coming out of an emotional dark age. People simply do not have the emotional quotient, the EQ to relate to themselves and others with any level of competency. It's easier to just get angry and to quit relationships than to do the self-awareness and healing. And yeah, even when you've done that, it's still, like I said, hard to connect with people who are not, not meeting you on that level. The reality, like I said, is of doing the shadow work for me, my experience is, you know, you're looking at indefinite celibacy and solitude and most people don't want it or they don't know how to do it. And those who do, like I said, are in, you know, solitude for years only to realize that most people cannot relate to them on their level. And because we're meant to be in union, we're not meant to be masters of our own domain. So we need really tools and resources to figure out how to deal with that reality. Um, I would like to see hopefully more advice on you know, handling loneliness, handling um, extended celibacy, um, the consequences of not being in a good union with another, um, right? I think we all know the consequences of being in a bad union, right? I, that doesn't, like, we've got enough of that. We need to figure out how do you do this? How do you deal with, you know, all those consequences that I mentioned, sexual, financial, um, social, you name it. Um, and we need more resources on how to build and maintain good relationships, like less talking the problem or the solution. I, I did, again, appreciate his coverage of the problem because I think he took it at a whole nother angle that a lot of people are not. And we needed that. We really needed that. But um, I would like to see more effort put out there to help men get more secure within themselves so that they can offer more security to women. They're stepping in the rightful position so that it's easier for women to step in their rightful position and women are you know it they can relax into embracing their femininity and their divine feminine qualities well that's all i've got for now and you know if you want to see my video on how to heal divine feminine energy i'll have it at the end of this video and if you didn't see part one you can watch it here till next time wishing you all the best be blessed